I'm gonna be happy with the result here. And I'm gonna look at it on a beautiful summer afternoon and I'll feel like it was worthwhile. I mean, that's what I'm just holding on to that, that idea. But it's times like this right now where it's difficult to make that connection mentally. Now on DVD and video on demand is The Beer Jesus from America, the incredible true story of brewmeister Greg Cook, who decided to take American craft beer to Europe. And Greg joins me right now. Greg, thank you so much for joining me today. And, uh, you know, I, I was watching your film and this documentary is so incredible. It's full about American entrepreneurship. And but in, the filmmaker that did this documentary, he was at the right place at the right time. Tell me about how you teamed up with him to make this incredible story. Well, yeah. So um, it turns out that he, we were first introduced through a friend of a friend and he was kind of interest, interested in uh, beer already because he had created this film called Beerland. Uh, which is a great film, and I highly recommend it. Um, and it kind of had taken a look at some of the interesting and quirky and lesser-known aspects of the German beer industry or beer culture, I guess. And uh, and then I met him, and I quickly just felt, okay, this is a guy that I think I could just trust. And I had been interested in trying to uh, find somebody to, you know, sort of document the thing along the way. Um, I historically liked to document in, in film and video what we've been doing. I started off, I was, you know, I released my first video blog um, in January of 2005, which was like three months before YouTube went live. And, uh, and we posted a, a series of several years. That was beginning with the, the, the construction of our brewery in, in Escondido, California, and our, our stone brewing, what became the stone brewing world, Bistro Gardens there. So, uh, you know, I've always just been interested in documenting things, and I met this guy, and I quickly developed a, a, a trust that, uh, you know, he was, he was legit, that he was caring, that he uh, was, um, I think, as the, the best documentary filmmakers are not coming in with an agenda, um, but instead just coming in and going to capture the story, whatever that story is. And Greg, you were on a mission to bring American beer to Europe, specifically Berlin. Was it time to bring good beer to Europe? <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell you, you can't say it that way or you'll just get uh, um, uh, you know, people being very uh, upset with that, that uh, turn of a phrase, you know, so I had to be very careful. I, I learned to be very careful about how I said, you know, it's the, um, because a very common uh, phrase, I'm getting a conversation with somebody say, you know, at a, at a bar in Berlin and uh, it would go like, uh, so, so what are you doing here in Germany? And I was like, well, I'm actually planning on opening a, a brewery uh, here in Berlin. Uh, a in Berlin and Deutschland, but but you're American, and this disbelief that anything good in the world of beer could come from America, because of course that's what they'd been told for generations that American beer was the laughing stock of the world when it came to beer. So I wanted to demonstrate that not only did we make really great beer in the United States and the craft brewing movement that we've been very much a part of, um, but it was a very different perspective. It was not, uh, you know, we never came in with the attitude of uh, uh, that the we're better. I, I've never really, <laughs> uh, you, you won't find any quote saying for me ever in our history saying, you know, we think our beer is better than somebody else's. Um, that, like I said in, in, the, in the film, I, I, I'm remembering now there's a quote, uh, you know, I said something like, we, don't, we never said our beer is the best. We just think our beer is pretty awesome. And we'd love to share it. Now, of all places, you chose Germany, which has centuries of tradition of beer making and including a 500 year old purity law. Tell me about that. Well, you know, there's a bit of a, a misconception, of course, you know, so Berlin doesn't really have a brewing um it doesn't have a brewing scene, hardly to speak of. And, and so that tradition also was really considered to be a lot more Bavarian. 
you know, that would be like, uh, you know, somebody, you know, saying, oh, you live in Las Vegas, you must, you know, go to the rodeo. And you're like, no, you're thinking of Texas, <laughs> you know, or, um, you know, you, you live in the United States, you must uh, go to the casinos all day. Well, you're thinking about Las Vegas. You know, they have different cultural regions around Germany, just like we do in the United States. And so <clears throat> this, but by the way, this, this, this uh, 500 year so-called purity law, um, actually the very first time, uh, I'll, I'll give you a little trivia question here. When was the first time that the purity law of 1516, uh, the word Reinheitsgebot, uh, ever showed up on a beer label in Germany. What do you think that is? The purity law 1516. But if you were going to hazard a guess, you're, you're not being graded on this, but if you're going to hazard a guess, what would you guess? If I had to guess, I would say about 1900. That's a reasonable guess. Actually, it wasn't until the early 1900s that it, um, for the word first ended up in any kind of an advertisement. First time on a German beer label was 1951. Wow. So the truth is, it's a modern day reinvention of an old taxation law as a traditional purity law, which it would never was. And don't tell any don't tell any modern day person that because they'll think that you're you're daft and you don't understand. Uh, and you tell a historian, the historian will nod their head and say, "Yes, you're right." I think one of the stars in your movie is the Gasworks, that old building they found from the 1940s that you eventually built your brewery in, but the cost overruns and the delays, I was a nervous wreck the whole time. Well, what was barely mentioned is the fact that we had settled on that, that property and then the building burned down. The, the, the whole roof was destroyed. And, uh, you know, that set the whole thing back by a couple of years right there. And we were looking in other areas as well. We were looking in a place in Belgium. We were looking at a place in the Alsace region of France. Because um, we did not specifically design, you know, decide right off that it was going to be Germany. We, we decided it was going to be Europe. But we didn't know about Germany specifically. But then we found that Gasworks building. And I fell in love with it. Now, you've described European beer like classical beer. And your beer is more like rock and roll beer. Right. Yeah, that, that's what, you know, we, we were bringing a different perspective. And who wants a, you know, world without both classical music and rock and roll? Uh, but if, uh, if you grew up listening to only classical music, then you're going to be very dismissive of this idea of rock and roll. And hell, you can even look at, you know, the birth of rock and roll in our own nation, and people were dismissive. Uh, jungle music, it's not proper music. It's just for uh, troublemaking and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, so people are always slow and reluctant to, to adopt new things that then, uh, you know, 10 years later or a generation later are just are part of the norm. So what's the story behind the Stone Brewery logo of the gargoyle? It's pretty cool. Yeah. So we actually uh, went back to tradition uh, and, and for that gargoyles uh, are historically known as protectors. And we used our gargoyle, um, and they're made out of stone, of course. And so we used our gargoyle to represent our philosophies in beer uh, by warding off cheap ingredients, pasteurization, and uh, chemical preservatives, uh, the modern-day evil spirits of beer. While you were building this new brewery in Berlin, the German media dubbed you the Beer Jesus from America. Did you appreciate that kind of title? I wouldn't have chosen it. <laughs> um, and it was really just that one, you know, uh, article that one that put me on the, the Berliner Courier. Um, and they were being intentionally cheeky when they did it. Um, and they were a bit dismissive. The, the funny thing is they superimposed me over a glass of beer that was anything other than a style of beer that we produce. Uh, you know, it was a very, it was they superimposed me over a glass of industrial beer. Well, I think you're much more of a beer poet, by the way. <laughs> Probably. Although I am admittedly apostatize it. There is no question about that. Now, when you finally got the brewery open and you were having your big party and your big uh, media day, I loved how you were playing Strange Brew in the beer garden off to the side. That's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> yeah, that's such an awesome film. Yeah. So, Greg, uh, I hate to say this, but I've never had a can of beer in my life. I've tasted beer, but I'm dying to try yours now. What's it taste like? Uh, we actually sell quite a bit of beer in Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas is a very good uh, market for us. 
Um, if you're not typically a beer drinker, then I think that it, you'll find the flavors potentially a bit bracing uh, because uh, we are in the acquired taste spectrum uh, largely. But, you know, everybody's different. Some people take to it right away and some people it takes a little while. So, Well, great. Congratulations on your new brewery and a great documentary and uh, best of luck to you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. That's the cost of being a romantic. Or a fool. All right, you can catch Beer Jesus from America now on DVD and on video on demand. And check this out. Thank you so much for Great Cook to send me. Where's the logo at? Oh, there it is. Stone Brewery. They sent me a really cool care package. I got me some cool stickers, little beer can holder, and they sent me. Four different types of his beer. You know, so I don't know. I'm gonna try one and I think I might do a video just for a taste test and watch me all the great facial expressions I have. Anyway, Greg, thank you so much for the samples and make sure you check out Beer Jesus of America. It's a good time. I'm Jeffrey Gay Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.